Welcome to the Creative Commons Cookbook. This video will introduce Creative Commons licenses, their different components, and how creators can use them to safely share their work and advance knowledge. Although it can seem daunting at first, Creative Commons licenses are a little bit like following the instructions in the cookbook. You just need to start with the right ingredients. The crucial first ingredient is a basic knowledge of copyright. Copyright and Creative Commons are interconnected concepts, so when discussing one, it's important to have an understanding of the other. Copyright is an automatic legal right, which is part of a larger suite of rights known as intellectual property rights. These rights and laws govern how the outputs of a creator, such as a journal article, book or a painting, can be used by others. Copyright law exists for a number of reasons. It offers an incentive to creators to encourage them to produce new works by giving them the chance to gain both money and a reputation from their outputs. And the laws also offer the creators a level of protection by helping to ensure that others don't claim credit for work they produced. Copyright is automatically granted once an original work meeting the criteria on the screen has been produced in a fixed form, for example, typing up a book chapter. Copyright is divided into two main areas, economic rights and moral rights, and it's important to understand the difference between these when dealing with Creative Commons. Economic rights are simply the rights to make money from a work by producing copies or renting it out, creating a new version or an adaptation, or showing a work to the public. These rights belong to the original creator unless they've been sold or given away. In contrast, the moral rights always stay with the creator and are designed to protect their reputation and give them the credit that they're due for producing the work in the first place. Creative Commons is designed to complement copyright rather than override it. New ways of sharing information and outputs online have made it easier for creators to distribute their work, but this has often come into conflict with copyright restrictions, as once something is online, it can be hard to know who it belongs to, or what the correct copyright permissions are. Creative Commons was launched to help address these tensions. In 1998, the Copyright Term Extension Act extended the term of copyright for every work in the US for an additional 50 years. Lawrence Lessig, a professor of law at Stanford University, thought that this was unconstitutional as it prevented works entering the public domain for longer. His argument was that this stifled creativity as works in the public domain can be adapted and built on to create new knowledge. The resulting court case failed, but it did result in the creation of both the Creative Commons organisation and the licences. The licences themselves were launched in 2002 as a way for creators to specify how they want their work to be used in a simple way which is consistent with copyright law. With Creative Commons licences, the creator retains the right to their work but allows others to see at a glance what they allow to do with it, which simplifies the process of building on existing knowledge to create new outputs. It's important to remember that Creative Commons licences sit alongside copyright and as a result they don't impact any existing exceptions or limitations, such as using materials for educational purposes. They are simply designed to make the sharing and reuse of outputs easier. Once the ingredients have been assembled, they need to be put together into something yummy. But what are the ingredients of a Creative Commons license? The licenses themselves are made up of three different layers, a little bit like a cake. The machine-readable layer is aimed at computer software and is easy for websites, apps and search engines to understand. Each license also contains legal code which is the legally enforceable information about the license. The final layer is known as the common deed, which is the human readable plain language version of the license. This sets out the conditions in an easy to understand way and is likely to be the layer that most people are familiar with. The licenses are designed to be customizable according to which of the following four elements are included. Each license must acknowledge the creator of the original work using the attribution element. The no derivatives element specifies that there can be no public changes made to the original work, including adaptations and remixes. This element is part of two licenses. If the non-commercial element is included, then only the original creator can make money from their work. Anyone who uses this work to create something new cannot sell it or otherwise use it for commercial purposes. Non-commercial is part of two licenses. The final element is share alike. This specifies that new creations must be shared under the same license as the original work, and again, is part of two of the licenses. The result is a license that's made to order, a little bit like a burger at a fast food restaurant. 
Each one is made up of ingredients that the restaurant stocks, but these can be combined to create the perfect burger for every customer. Each one must include some type of burger, the CC by element in this analogy, but the customer can add whichever toppings they want. If they want to make sure it's not used for commercial purposes, they can add the cheese or the NC element and then top it off with bacon, the SA element, to make sure that anyone adapting their work shares a new creation under the same license. The result is a Creative Commons license, which can then be applied to the finished burger or work. There are six Creative Commons licenses, excluding the CC0 option, which is sometimes known as the public domain. Works in this category have been made free to use by anyone for any purpose, either because their copyright has expired or because their creator has released in this way. Although the licenses are visually similar, you can see that each one is made up of different elements. From least to most restrictive, the licenses are attribution, where licensees are free to distribute, remix and build upon the original work as long as they credit the author for the original creation. Attribution share alike, people are able to remix or build upon a work, even commercially, as long as they credit the author and share their new work under identical terms. Attribution non-commercial, where again people can remix a work but they're not allowed to do so for commercial gain. Attribution no derivatives. The new work can be shared both commercially and non-commercially, as long as the work is unchanged and the original author is credited. It's worth remembering that people can change your work under this license for their own private use, but they're not allowed to share it in any way. Attribution non-commercial share alike, where work can be remixed and built upon non-commercially, as long as the original creator is given credit and the new work is licensed under identical terms to the original. And finally, attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives. This is the most restrictive of the open licenses and specifies that works can be downloaded and shared as long as they are not changed in any way, not used commercially, and the original creator is given credit. When the recipe is complete, it's time to present the finished product to the wider world so that they can have a taste. But how do creators actually use Creative Commons licenses? Although it might seem complicated, in practice it's easy to license work under Creative Commons. The Creative Commons website has a handy license selector tool, which will talk any creators through the process of selecting a license suitable for their needs. Once this is done, the website offers machine-readable code, statements and images that can be added to online materials so the correct license is displayed. Beyond adding a CC license, creators need to think about how open they're really making their work. Although adding an open license is a great first step, this isn't of much use if there are other blocks to using a work. When making work openly available, creators should consider using open formats rather than proprietary software so that more people can access it and also ensuring that they don't use an upload platform which adds any kind of digital rights management as this can make it hard for people to access and adapt the outputs. Once a license has been attached, it can't be revoked but there are some options open to creators if they decide they're not happy with the original license. They can take the work in question offline and or re-upload it with a different license if desired. However, it's important to remember that there is no such thing as removing something completely from the internet and if someone finds the original uploaded work, they're entitled to use it under the original license. A good recipe needs someone to try it out. But how do people go about finding and using Creative Commons content? A simple online search will bring up a huge range of openly licensed material, but even when using filters it pays to be cautious and always double check the license on the individual work. There are also dedicated search engines and sites for Creative Commons material, such as the Creative Commons search tool and Wikimedia Commons, where all material is available to use under a CC license. All CC licensed content must be properly attributed when used. There are many ways of citing material, but one of the best is the TASL method, title, author, source and license. This includes all of the relevant information for the correct attribution of a work. Remember that CC0 material is not under a license, but is instead in the public domain. This means that the material is free to use and build on without attribution, although this is still good practice if the name of the creator is available. Finally, it's a good idea to remember that Creative Commons licenses are designed to complement copyright, not replace it. 
if the use of CC licensed material falls under any existing copyright exception or limitation, then this overrides the CC license. One of the major sources of confusion around using CC licensed content comes when collecting it together or remixing it to create something new. The difference between a collection and a remix is crucial and again can be illustrated using a foodie example as created by blogger Nate Angel. In a collection, as seen on the left, separately CC licensed works can be gathered together, for example a collection of open and licensed poetry. Like a TV dinner, each work retains its own individual identity and license, which needs to be included in any attribution. Although the collection as a whole may be subject to copyright, this is only in the new contributions that have been made in collecting it together, such as the arrangement of works or any additional content added, such as an introduction. By contrast, a remix is a little bit like a fruit smoothie. Different CC licensed materials represent the fruit and berries and these are mixed together to create something new where it's impossible to tell where one ingredient ends and another begins. Creating something this different usually creates a work which is original enough to qualify for copyright protection in its own right but this is not always clear cut. What happens if something goes wrong with the recipe and you end up with the dreaded soggy bottom? Many creators are worried that people will not observe the conditions they've outlined for the use of their work, and whilst this may happen, there are plenty of protections in place for authors. Creators can choose not to be associated with their materials or object to any uses of the material which they strongly disagree with. Any creators who've licensed a work can completely waive their right to attribution, which is the fundamental ingredient in all CC licenses. In addition, if they do not like how their creation has been used or adapted, they can ask to have their name removed from that particular output. The attribution element also contains a clause which stops the name of the original creator being used to endorse and or support the views expressed in the new work. If this happens, an objection can be raised citing the legal clause placed within each licence. The bottom line though is that creators need to remember that as long as licensees are not violating the CC licence attached to a work, they have little control over it once it's been published. This is one of the reasons that choosing the right license to begin with is so crucial. Anyone using Creative Commons as either a licensor or a licensee should remember that these are legally enforceable licenses which will hold up in a court of law. Thinking back to the layers example from earlier in the video, you might remember that there's a layer of legal code embedded in every license. Broadly speaking, the open community follows the rules, but there have been a few cases involving Creative Commons licenses which have come to court although their legal standing has never been under question. Those using CC license work should remember that their right to use these ends as soon as they violate the license terms, although under the most recent version they have 30 days to correct any violation to have these rights reinstated. The result of the Creative Commons cookbook is a simple and effective way to promote the sharing and reuse of the world's knowledge. They offer creators, a chance to specify exactly what they will allow others to do with their work whilst protecting their rights and at the same time those looking to use materials have an easy way to find reusable information. Like the best recipes, let's hope that Creative Commons licences are used for generations to come but remember this is one recipe where there's no such thing as too many cooks in the kitchen. The more people that use Creative Commons licences, the more materials will be available and who knows where this knowledge might lead.